Time for chapter 19 of The Elements of Brie, Slide. Brie was exhausted and went to sleep early that night. The next morning, Samuel met her in a room off the second level and fed her a wonderful breakfast of fruit, cheese, dried meat, and bread. When she packed some food for the rest of her journey, he led her, Blaze, and Odiana down a staircase hidden behind a wall across from the small altar where she had been sent away as a baby. As they went down, she began to hear the sound of water in the distance. The more they descended, the louder it became. At the bottom, they emerged onto a platform near a hole that led to a section of a curved tunnel full of fast-flowing water. You might recognize this as the type of water slide, Samuel said, although this slide is made of a smooth mountain rock. Where does it go? Bree asked. After winding through the mountain, you'll end up at a basin that eventually drains into the Wind Creek. This creek will take you to the harbor. However, if you go south from the basin, you'll arrive in the Royal Golian Forest. She took a deep breath and approached the step down into the tunnel of water. I am not really in the mood to get wet, she said. Neither am I, Blaze commented. She reached out and touched the water and then smiled. Hmm. At least it's warm. Odiana landed on her shoulder and began chattering. No rain spell, she said. She waved her wand, and a dark blue mist fell out and surrounded Bree. She then turned and sprinkled some on Blaze, causing him to sneeze. After finally sprinkling some on herself, she sat on Bree's shoulder. Bree looked at her hands and then to Blaze. They were all glowing blue. Rain is hard for fairies, Odiana said. This will keep us dry. She seemed out of breath and tired, so Bree gave Samuel a questioning look. Fairy magic drains the user, he said, coming closer to them. If she used it on herself, that would be fine, but all three of you? Well, that drains her energy. You take it easy. Bree looked to Odiana. Thank you, but save your powers, okay, Odie? Odiana screwed up her face at the nickname, but nodded. Bree stepped into the rushing water and looked down. She could feel the pressure from the water against her legs, but she felt dry. She smiled and took a step deeper into the tunnel. Good luck, Samuel said. Thanks, Bree replied and then jumped in. Blaze followed close behind, and even though he hesitated briefly, Odiana held on to Bree as tight as they, as they wound this way and that near the pitch-black tunnel. The roar of the water was deafening, and Bree found herself getting dizzy as she went further along in the mountain water slide. She could hear Blaze grunting behind her and worry that he was spinning out of control. She couldn't see anything to tell if she was right, but she felt Blaze was not enjoying himself. Eventually, a bright circular light appeared in the distance, and she rushed towards it. Exiting the tunnel, she found herself in a waterfall that fed into a deep basin of water below. She crashed into the surface and sunk deep underwater. As she came up, Blaze landed on top of her, scrambling to get any type of control. They broke through to the surface of the water and swam away to the edge of the basin. As they crawled out, they both started trying to get the water off themselves, but then realized they're still dry. Blaze shook his body out of instinct, but realized he didn't need to. Odiana left Bree's shoulder and floated into the air above her. The bluish glow that they all had was already fading. See, Odiana said, I'll dry. Thanks, Odie, Bree said, ignoring the dirty look she got from the nickname. She could see from where they stood that the basin emptied into a small creek on the far side. Walking against the current of the creek and approaching slowly were three sea hags. She drew out her slingshot and placed a pebble of rosarium inside. Aiming, she fired at the closest one, causing it to explode into a ball of green dust. The remaining two charged at Bree, suddenly running through the water faster than any human could. She grabbed another pebble and fired it, killing the second one, but the third one was too close for her to ready another shot. Thankfully, Blaze pounced. He grabbed the sea hag by the throat and dragged it underwater. After a few moments of thrashing, the creature stopped moving and Blaze raised his mouth. He spat out some of the scales and slime in his mouth. We should, uh, we should leave before the moor arrive, Bree said. They must travel up to this basin from the harbor I saw from the Temple of Ether. Blaze nodded and walked out of the water, still dry from Odiana's spell. Bree turned around to see a worn path leading through a small grouping of trees around the basin to the forest in the distance. She knew exactly which way to go. And that's it for that chapter. Have a good day.